today. This is Dr. Justin Coulson, the author of six books about raising happy families and the founder of happyfamilies.com.au. Here with Kylie, my wife, podcast co-host and mum to our six daughters. Uh, Because it's school holidays, we are sharing with you podcast conversations that matter. We think that this one is going to be really important. It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. The first one is intention. And I think it's just so important that we actually work out what our intention is. What are we actually hoping to get out of life? And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. Hello, this is Dr. Justin Coulson, the author of six books about raising happy families. Here with Kylie, my wife and co-host, and the mum to our six daughters, I want to highlight another review on the podcast from Apple Podcasts. They've been coming in like every day, thick and fast, five-star reviews, uh, all of them, which is so wonderful. Thank you. This one's super short, but it's wonderful, practical series from Therima from Switzerland. Hey, thank you so much, Therima. We really appreciate that. Uh, Those five-star reviews help other people to find out about the podcast, and it can literally be three words. You can just say, wonderful, practical series. And write your name, where you're from. That's all we need. So five stars, super. Thank you so much, uh, Therima. So today I thought that we might tackle something that you and I actually struggle with a fair bit. Well, actually, I'm going to push this all onto you. This is something you struggle with a lot. I've really made some conscious efforts this year to be more intentional about how I spend my time and in particular actually saying no. I'm feeling a little bit attacked here. Yeah. I'm feeling a little bit threatened. Are, are, you, are you saying that I don't say no and that I'm not intentional? There, there is a little quote that you use a lot uh-huh. in our house and it's bite off for more than you can chew. Does it sound like anything oh, you might say? Oh, all, right, all right. So there's a little bit of history here. Uh, I didn't know you were going to go there. Um, so, so basically uh, years and years and years ago, I was goofing off and coming up with kind of like a mantra or a motto for my life. Like what's, what's one line that describes what my life is? And I couldn't come up with one, but I came up with two. And the first one was always bite off more than I can chew. And the second one is make it up as you go along. Because obviously, once you bite off more than you can chew, you got to you got to just shoot from the hip. And you know what? I actually love that about you because we have achieved things that we would never have achieved if you hadn't have done that. Well, it makes life exciting when you just say yes to everything. Yeah, it's also quite <laughs> exhausting. <laughs> it is. It, it reminds me uh, of a really, really, I think, clever Seinfeld skit from years ago. It was on his show, and I found it on YouTube. Uh, have a listen and see if this sounds a bit like me. I never get enough sleep. I stay up late at night because I'm night guy. <laughs> night guy wants to stay up late. What about getting up after five hours sleep? Oh, that's morning guy's problem. <laughs> that's not my problem. I'm night guy. I stay up as late as I want. So you get up in the morning, you're warm, you're exhausted, groggy. Oh, I hate that night guy. <laughs> See, night guy always screws morning guy. There's nothing morning guy can do. The only morning guy can do is try and oversleep often enough so that day guy loses his job and night guy has no money to go out anymore. So I'm kind of... I just love it. I, I'm, I'm kind of night guy, right? Oh, you were so a night guy, but it's even weekend guy. You look at our calendar at the beginning of the week and you realise that we're completely and utterly free for the weekend. And yeah. I'm thinking, this is awesome. <laughs> so We've got like, we no can, commitments. We can, we can, do can stuff. just <laughs> get things done in the house, have some time with the kids. And all of a sudden... You've made suggestions, several suggestions, not just one, but several suggestions about what we might do to fill up that time. (laughs) By the time we get to the weekend, we're so exhausted. You've booked in two or three social events that require our time, attention and energy. (laughs) And I'm looking at you going, I just want to go to bed. Yeah. But if you bite off more than you can chew... (laughs) You, you get to have so much more fun. There's no fun in bed. Well, I shouldn't say there's no fun in bed. We have six children. But <laughs> but, but, but I think uh, – so, I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> but I think that there's this thing going on with um, – <laughs> no, nor can I. So, so years and years and years ago, I think we were expecting child number three or maybe child number four, and uh, I decided that I was going to be noble and helpful around the house. And so I picked up all of the dirty washing. I made a darks pile. I made a whites pile. And I made a pinks pile because we had lots of little girls. And uh, the the darks pile was huge. And I thought, well, I'll start with the big pile. And you you were expecting. And so I was trying to do this so that you didn't have to do all of the housework because, you know, I was trying to be noble. And um, I stuffed a whole lot of 
clothing into the washing machine, like probably two and a half loads worth. I just kept on jamming it in there more and more and more because there was, I just thought, why would I do this in two or three loads when I can do it in one? <laughs> and then when I pulled the washing. Any mum that's listening right now knows where this is going. I, I think I deserve points for trying. Anyway, so I've <laughs> pulled the washing out and as I'm pulling it out, it's dirtier coming out than it was when it went in. And there's all of this fuzz all over the washing and I'm like, what have I done here? There's something the matter with the washing machine. You walked into the kitchen and I'm staring at the uh, Harvey Norman electrical appliance catalogue thinking I need to buy a new washing machine for our family because this one's on the blink. And um, you then described it to me uh, when you saw and diagnosed the problem that the washing machine doesn't work properly when you try and cram too much in. It's kind of like the refrigerator when it's too full. It doesn't keep everything cold. Your things go off so much faster. Our lives are exactly like that. Don't try to cram too much in. So what we want to do uh, as we uh, finish the psychoanalysis of Justin Coulson and his desire to do all things all the time, uh, what we want to do is talk to you about how we can create more margin in our lives. We'll do that right after the break. It's the Happy Families Podcast. Imagine a home where discipline got results without anyone having to feel bad or in trouble. The Do's and Don'ts of Discipline is a webinar to help parents set limits with love, compassion and humanity. Find it now at happyfamilies.com.au slash shop. It's the Happy Families Podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. And today, Dr. Justin is looking for answers to create more <laughs> margin in his life. Well, I clearly have no idea how to create breathing space. <laughs> uh, my life motto, like I said, is always bite off more than you can chew. And, and just to put this into context, if you look at my bedside table, uh, there are, uh, how many books would you say are currently on my bedside table? Oh, you have a bookshelf for a bedside table. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually do. need to buy you a bookshelf because the bedside table, the poor thing, is weighed <laughs> down by piles and, and then those piles spill over onto the carpet because you can't possibly fit them all. I, I think at the moment you would have no less than 30 books at the same sitting time, at your bedside. At the same time, we're trying to binge watch a new Netflix series that we've uh, really enjoyed. Uh, and Because tr- we can't do it once a week like the old days when well, you used to watch it come out. No, you're making, no. It, you're making it, me feel really bad here. <laughs> Netflix is there so you can you can you know <laughs> watch it when you plan want <laughs> and and you know watch it when you want. That's said, right. When so it's I have convenient. no restraint. I have no restraint. When the Tour de France is on, I become night guy. <laughs> and I'll stay up until two o'clock watching the Tour de France, and then I expect to get up four hours later and function. Are you sure you didn't have a have a conversation with Jerry before he did that skit? I'm sure he's talking about you. All right. So, so how do we create margin, Mrs. Happy Families? Because clearly, uh, it's not my strength. Look, I think there's three things that will really, really make a difference for you if you'll if you'll listen. <laughs> I feel like I'm on the couch. <laughs> the first one is intention. And I think it's just so important that we actually work out what our intention is. What are we actually hoping to get out of life? Mm, if it's- everything. <laughs> Literally, I want to get everything out of life. We can't <laughs> be good at everything and we can't do everything. So what are the things that are most important? And that kind of, I guess, leads into the second part. Oh, hang on. I, I just want to, I, w- I want to drill down on this for a second because as much as I've joked around, uh, we have as a couple been – breathtakingly intentional over the years as we've tried to refine that that concept of what are the things that matter most. There's a, a quote from Stephen R. Covey in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where he says, the things that matter most must never be at the mercy of the things which matter least. I love that. And I love it because it's so easy for us to get caught up in the thick of thin things. We, we literally kind of get so caught up in all of these urgent disasters. Yeah, or, or, or just n- the need to watch Netflix. I'm, I, I'm sitting here nursing a Netflix hangover right now. That's the truth of it. We shouldn't have stayed up late last night watching that show and now I've got a headache for it. But but I was acting without intention. I wasn't keeping the main thing the main thing. And that's the main thing. Watching Netflix. No, keeping the main thing the main thing. That's the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. So have intentional, actually know what the main thing is and then live according to it. I mean, this is this is actually a really great wake-up call and I think that we do need to change the way we're doing some things and the fact that I'm trying to do it all. So intention, it's all about self-control, right? It's all about discipline. It's all about recognising where you're headed and and what you need to do to get there. And that really leads in nicely to point number two, which is to – plan our big rocks. You know, what are the things that are most important for us to achieve? 
and they need to go in first before we add in all the extra stuff, like, yeah. you know, inviting friends over for dinner on Saturday night. <laughs> right. So, But get clear on your priorities. In other words, if sleep, getting enough sleep is a priority, and I can't emphasise this enough, sleep is not a luxury item. As a parent, you don't um, – we talked about this last Thursday. We don't get enough sleep. Yeah, that's right. I, I, but but it's not a luxury item. And the, the the good quality sleep that you need should not be at the mercy of a Netflix series. Watch Netflix on a day where you actually do have the capacity and the time to do it. I think I'm putting this episode on repeat. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so uh, priority, pr- priorities, prioritise, bo- both of those words combined tell us that once we've got our intention set, we've actually got to live it. Uh, what, what are our big rocks? What, what do we put into the diary every single week? Or what do we maintain so that our family functions well? This, this could be instructive for anybody who's sort of feeling a bit out of control. Well, we have a family meeting every morning so that we can help um, set our intention for the day. We check in with the kids. We find out what needs to be done. So we've got all of those, I guess, logistics planned out throughout the day. Yeah, and we also spend time focused on on a specific value or a specific uh, teaching or principle that we want the children to to, to have emphasised and to really encourage them to live good lives. And I think the other thing that's really important is we're really intentional about sitting down to have dinner together at the end of the day. So we start our day together and we end our day together as much as it's possible now that we have teenage girls who have social lives. We try and plan a date night each week. Uh, we, we lock in Super Saturday so that the kids know early in the week, this Saturday morning for the two hours, this, this low cost or no cost activity where we're together as a family. We've got that locked in. Uh, I go for a run uh, with a couple of the kids on a couple of the mornings each week, we lock in our exercise. So we actually make sure that we put these big rocks in so that the, the daddy-daughter dates happen or the, the quality time between you and I happen. That stuff has to happen and everything else fits in around that. Yeah. The last one is learning to say no. And it's so funny because our tiny little toddlers know the word no. Yeah, they <laughs> do. Yeah. As we get older, we get, have a hard time saying no. So if we're looking to create margin in our lives, we need to kind of, I guess, go through those filters of what are our big rocks? What is our intention? What's the things that are most important for us as a family to flourish and grow together in happiness? That's our whole plan, right? We want a happy family. We need to learn to be able to recognise when something doesn't fit the mould and say no. I feel like you've actually constructed this podcast uh, to teach me a lesson. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. So uh, the best way for you to get me to say no is to actually put something in my diary so that I have to say no. And you could put in family time from this time to that time on a Saturday. And all of a sudden, we know that we can't have friends over because we've got something in the diary. Well, in your defence, I love having friends over, but when we get to Saturday <laughs> night, I'm so tired. I, I really like that though. Saying no means saying no to Netflix or it means saying no to whatever it is that's not aligned with our priorities, not aligned with our intention. Uh, really, really great tips. And it came from you, Mrs. Happy Families. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. If you've enjoyed the podcast, we'd love it if you'd leave a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Uh, We really appreciate the five-star ratings and the reviews that you send through. They help other people to find out about the podcast and make their family happier. Justin Rulon is our producer. We appreciate him and the great work that he does from Bridge Media in making the podcast sound great. Our executive producer is Craig Bruce. If you'd like more information about making your family happier, you can get it at happyfamilies.com.au. 